totally. And I also think that William Barron is going to get better as we go, as, as the race goes, you know, because he's so used to the, the, the cop car and, and it's so different to Xfinity car. Here's our race analysis for the race today. 200 laps, 200 miles, stage one, 45 laps. Stage two is 45 laps as well. And the final stage, 110 laps. Let's check in on the 26th little pep talk for Corey Heim. Keep us up to date all day. We'll stay calm and cool. Corey, good job qualifying. See if we can't make a day of it. Yes, sir. Appreciate all you guys. It's a good day to have a great day. Good day. I like it. Good day to have a great day. It's good words to live by. Now, as you come to the start here, remember, they're going to go three, four, five wide through this dog leg right off the bat as they barrel it down into turn one, wondering what the heck their cars were about to do. <laughs> Joey, I think the fans listen to you. They're all standing to their feet now. They know what's about to come here as Cole Custer, Chandler Smith lead this field to green, and we are racing in Phoenix. Banning out three, four wide. They're still side by side into turn one. Look at that two car. The, the, the two car was wasting enough time. He really went to the very, very apron, and he was able to make good, good progress right there. But well, obviously, he's paying a little bit of price on, on, on actually the corner right there. Yeah, I still think he netted ahead with that move. And it's going to be really tight right there with Eric Amarola in the 19. These guys are racing hard. Look at John Hunter Nemechek there in a 20 contact already. And this is when you got to get after it. You know, you may not know what your car is going to do, but you got to go as early as you possibly can as all these cars are so close to each other. There's so much room to make moves here at Phoenix, especially through, through turns one and two that we just seen. So Chandler Smith with control of the race now. Cole Custer moves into second. Corey Heim, Riley Herbs, and look at this three wide, trying to make a four wide battle. You know, something that is going to be very important, all these guys right now are going to school, right? Uh, uh, Cole Closer, which we all know that has a very fast race car, he lost the lead, you know, on the restart. And all these guys are going to have to start making notes, which line is better, how much dog lead do you have to cut, bottom, top, and things like that, because obviously Chandler Smith did a very, very good job right there uh, getting the lead from, uh, from the 0-0. Zero -zero. Look back at Jesse Love and John Hunter Nemechek right there. Yeah, I think that's a case of, you know, John Hunter probably thinking that they were too wide and they might have actually been three wide and ran out of real estate. How much does the track really change when you're in the car for qualifying and then four hours later you're out there with everybody else and the track temp has gone up quite a bit? Yeah, the racetrack is going to change quite a bit because right now the racetrack is very clean, right? Yeah, the last time that, uh, that we had cars on the track, it was in qualifying, cup qualifying, so the racetrack is clean. And right now, slowly, we're going to see the racetrack laying down some cover, and that is going to make the, the track uh, change direction, change balance, and also get a little bit more greasy when it comes to, when it, when it comes to grip. Great battle right here for fifth. Absolutely. I say that the track's definitely going to widen out, you know, as you see it go along here. It's going to move up down here in three and four and definitely down in one and two in the flat along corner. As we got a spinner here. Got the 11 around. Josh Williams will bring out the caution for the first time. I believe he may have had help. Dawson Cram, I saw him in the four in the background. He was involved as well. You spin it around. Brent, get a really good look at the right front for me, sir. Some damage to the rear. Looks like he'll be able to drive it back around. Patrick Emmerling is involved. Let's see what happened here, boys. Here you see the three wide off of turn two. It looks like the 51 of Clements gets into the left rear a little bit. Just a tight squeeze off the corner. It definitely tightens up, Daniel, there as he comes off the it's, corner. And it's tough. You know, the, the 51, obviously, he, he wants to be three wide bottom. Uh, but it's just too tight. You know, it's, 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 it's a little bit too tight. Or maybe he didn't know that they were three wide. Uh, who knows? But but he just... Yeah, it looks like he, he just washed up there. He just washed up into the, into the 11. The 11 really didn't have, you know, anywhere to go. Josh Williams was running 23rd at the time. Right on board here with Frankie Muniz. How about a close call for Sheldon Creed? He was in the outside of that incident. He's on the move, up nine spots already. Caution out for the first time for this.
Eight laps in, 192 laps to go. Chandler Smith is the leader. He's led all eight laps so far. So we do something called the Xfinity Stock Market. Whose stock is up? Whose stock is down after three races? What do you guys think? Well, Austin Hill came out of the gate strong. Chandler Smith also was right there in the hunt, a lot of them. This is the one that, you know, Kali Gracing, not, not the best to start. Sam Mayer, unfortunately, just been caught up in a couple wrecks pretty early here. Two uh, DNFs in three races for him. Yeah, I, al I also think that uh, AJ Hammendinger, he's going to he's gonna help a lot Colin Racing. You know, he, he came from full-time club racing. Now he's full-time experience racing. You know, give him a little bit of time, and I think he's going to be able to, to bring the, the, the program uh, to, to, a, better, to a, better, a better standard. And that's Josh Williams. He's under the colleague umbrella having issues here earlier. Are you guys buying any of those? You're supposed to buy when it, when the stock's down, right? Yeah, I'm buying Sam Mayer. Yeah, let, let's wait to, fly, to get a little more flat, <laughs> and then we start <laughs> buying. <laughs> let's listen to the radio for Justin Allgaier. I'll tell you this. The two better be really thankful that he's got some veterans around him. Because if there weren't, my man was watching the whole field up going into one. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> We're talking about Jesse Love right behind him in the two car. That, that was an aggressive move. That was an aggressive move. But, but like we talked, it worked out for him. You know, he, it was an aggressive move. And, and I think he net maybe a spot or two ahead and, and do for him. You can bank on him doing it again if it worked the first time. <laughs> He's going to be aggressive throughout the rest of the race for sure. Let's go back up to the leader and hear what they're talking about on the radio. Good for brakes and tires and everything. That, that line you're running in, you're pulling away from them. So keep it up. You're doing good. Copy. Yeah, I was riding right there. Probably I wasn't even trying to slip to the front or the rear. I was just trying to manage stuff a little bit. See how pace was doing that. That's the advantage you have when you're the leader. You got clean air. You can pace it as much as you want. Tires fall off a fair amount here, and they're about to restart here on 11 lap tires, right? They had a, sh a shorter green flag run there, but it's gonna be different this time than it was the original start. They're gonna go down to the turn one, and they're gonna be sliding a lot more than they did the run before. This is gonna be something they're gonna have to get used to, though, is the second to third run on tires. They only have three sets laying, so you cannot afford to pit in this first stage unless you're somebody that's looking to make something happen in the first stage and take the penalty later in the race. If not, you got to be okay refiring on old tires. Let's get an update on the 98 Riley Herbst. Josh. Yeah, so for Riley Herbst during practice, they had a bad vibration. So I talked to crew chief Devin Restivo after. He said when they took the tires off, they didn't like the way they looked, but when they put the qualifiers on, he didn't have that shake anymore. Well, just after that first run, the team asked him, is that vibration back? He said, no, it's fine. So they'll keep an eye on it. But for now, things are looking much better for the 98. That's good news for Riley Herbst. Just behind his teammate Cole Custer there for this restart in the second row. Get all bunched up. First restart of the day. Right there, the Zero Zero did a great job slowing down the 81. And, uh, and I mean, I thought he was going to send it a little bit more into the one. But, uh, you know, right now, these guys are going to just continue to learn which line works a little bit better. Uh, the Zero Zero was on the lead in the, first, uh, in the start of the race in the bottom. He lost the lead. And right now, he's still second in the bottom again. So I'm pretty sure that the, that the top is going to continue to to propel. Well, John Hunter Nemechek just passed a whole bunch of cars on the top side in one and two. Got another one or two down in three and four as they all barreled down to the bottom of the racetrack. He took that air up top. So what an incredible start for John Hunter Nemechek getting some track position. John Hunter started the race in ninth now. Gained three spots since the restart. And this is where you always like, well, which lane do I want to pick? Yeah. <laughs> They're too wide. Where, where do I want to be? These Xfinity cars, they like the top lane a lot, mainly because when you get really close to someone's right side door, it makes them loose. So the, the top is definitely preferred in the Xfinity cars more than the cup cars. Yeah, it seems, seems to me that you can affect the bottom car just easily, right? Uh, by, by taking the air out of the, of the, right, of the, of the right side of the car. Um, and yeah, it seems like uh, John Hunter is taking full advantage of that. 
Looks like Justin Allgaier got a little bit loose. He was on the inside, went to the outside. Nice battle between teammates behind him, a couple of Gibbs cars. Yeah, Eric Almarola in the 19, he did a great job at being patient, getting his left side on that yellow line. There's a little bit of grip on that yellow line. And when John Hunter missed the bottom a little bit, it allowed him to pull up underneath him. But now, you see, it's too wide in front of him. <laughs> Nowhere to go, go anyways. <laughs> Looking at Eric Almirola in the 19, that goal bowling. Did you guys know he's a pretty darn good bowler? Like, I would hope so by now. He's had that sponsor for some years. I would I would hope by now he can bowl. I saw with my own eyes with professionals from the PBA yesterday. They did a little show that'll air on Fox next Sunday, but he was he was getting after it. He's quite an athlete. Look Whoa. at this move, getting to the outside of the 98. Can't quite make it happen there. He's going to have a good run down the straightaway here, though. Nice run on his teammate. You see Eric, got to get on that paint. That paint means a lot. As the run goes, it seems to mean even more. Eric Almirola back in the Xfinity Series part-time this year. Wants to spend more time with his family. But he's all invested. He feels like it's full-time. He's been getting reacquainted with the Gibbs family and team. Yeah, as, as much as you would, <laughs> it's like a almost kind of retired, but not really. <laughs> as yeah. you go back to the Xfinity <laughs> Series, he's got to relearn so many things. Not to mention the people and the process of Gibbs versus Stuart Haas, where he spent so many years. It's it's definitely a, a learning experience for him, and I'm sure he's going to keep getting better as he gets more races under his belt. Chandler Smith continues to lead, 17 laps and counting. Cole Custer behind him, Corey Heim, no change up front. I mean, we have to we have to pay attention to William Byron. William Byron is starting 28. Right now, he, he already passed 14 cars. He is making 24, 24 he started that. Right now, he's in 14. He's making progress. He continues to learn the car. I think with Byron, is going to be a contending. He's going to be contending for, for, for the top three, top five, uh, you know, by the end of stage one and stage two. Yeah, the downfall for Williams starting so far back is, is he's using up his tires a lot right now as he tries to get through the field and get some of his track position back. And so he doesn't really know the balance of his car, or what it will be when he gets towards the front. Remember, there's only three pit stops in this race. There's not much opportunity to work on your car. So he's going to be maybe a change behind compared to others if his car is not balanced perfectly right now. So William Byron running this 17. The 17 car will run 10 times this year. All four of the cup drivers, Chase Elliott, will see him in. But Chase, or who's coming up next? Coda is the next race for the Xfinity Series. Kyle Larson will be in the field. And Boris said coming back. Yeah, Boris said will run watch. at Sonoma. So nice to see the star car for Hendrick. But right now, stage number one, it's all about Chandler Smith.
Welcome back to Phoenix Raceway. It's the call811.com. Every dig, every time, 200. And we got 20 laps to go in stage one. You did well. Thank you. Hey, you did good, amigo. I Seems dig like what you this. did. You know, the driver's only thing is coming up in Charlotte. And uh, I got to get good at that stuff because <laughs> Harvick used to do all that for us up in the booth. And now I am taking over the, uh, what is that position called? The play-by-play? -play? Yes. Play -by -play. That's me. Um, that is the lead broadcaster, my friend. And look out. Knocked it out of the park, Joey. Well, I don't know about that. but How about Justin Allgaier? Up two positions since the start of the race. Two-time winner here. Nice view of his dad sitting on the pit box, some fans, and his team working hard. Let's get an update on him, Regan. Well, Jamie, things are going well for Justin so far. Interesting, I talked to him yesterday, and he had a little bit different opinion about what this race might look like. Felt like it was going to be more of a bottom feeder race, and you see him right now running below the yellow line. Said he felt like all the traction compound that used to be on Phoenix was finally worn off. Thought this was going to play right to his hands, and it is right now. He's turning some very quick lap times. Happy in the race car, just a little bit loose off right now. Josh? Let's get an update on the 26 of Corey Heim. This is just his sixth NASCAR Xfinity Series race. He's full time in the truck series with Tricon this year once again. Checked in with him earlier, excited about the weekends where he doesn't have to do double duty, can focus just on the car in Xfinity and learning. Well, he fired off pretty good, said it was just a little tight in the center. Then he said it's snappy when he initially gets to the throttle in three. And for Joey and Daniel, what does it mean when the guy said it's snappy getting off the throttle? I mean, she's a little too loose, as you see. <laughs> Bradley Herbst take a little air off that spoiler and get a little freer even. Uh, you know, Corey obviously did an amazing job qualifying. He's done a good job of keeping that thing up front, too, showing the speed that they really got there. But he's got a lot of cars breathing down his neck right now. As John Hunter Nemechek, one of the best in the Xfinity Series right now, coming off a win last year or last week right on him. So we right on board with John Hunter Nemechek. Let's take a look at our top performers from Toyota. Chandler Smith continues to lead. Eric Almirola, fourth. Corey Heim, John Hunter Nemechek. Not a bad day for them, but that's kind of what you expect when you come to Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. Sure. Those Gibbs cars here for years have been very, very strong. 16 wins they have. Yeah, it seems to me that it doesn't matter the package. It doesn't matter if they have high downforce, low downforce. I mean, when, when I was with them back in 2015 and 16, I remember that the cars were super strong. So they have, they have something figured out. Uh, having four cars in the top seven is quite impressive. And the 20 is still coming. The 20 and Nima check back there in seventh. Riding on board with Frankie Muniz. Hasn't made up a whole lot of ground. He's down a lap, but just Learning every lap, right, Joey? You talked on the radio about just surrounding himself with all these racers that have been doing it, trying to learn every lap and, and finish the race. Yeah, I mean, this is a hard racetrack. Phoenix is one of the most technical racetracks. It's really hard to get around. And it's such a level up from the Arca Bernard series to the Xfinity series. I mean, it is so much tougher. The talent that is in this series, the race teams that have good cars, is it's pretty deep. So it takes a while to get your head wrapped around that, for sure. Well, I also I agree with Frankie when he said, if you want to get better, you have to surround yourself with better drivers, you know, to learn from the best guys. And yeah, you know, he's putting the bar pretty high in the Xfinity Series, but I think he's gonna he's gonna be able to learn quicker than if he was in a in a in a in, in a lower division series. Uh, and this, he's definitely going to school right now. Battle for eighth right now. And here's another young man that's going to school. The two of Jesse Love watching and learning. Slip back a little bit to ninth. As Brandon Jones, a former winner here at Phoenix, takes the position. Let's get an update on the 21, Regan. Well, Jamie, Austin Hill been at the front most of this season. In fact, in the top five, every race and two wins already. Struggled a little bit today, though. Practice not exactly what they wanted, a tight race car. That has continued into the race right now. He's only up two spots from where he started in 15th. Fighting with the front tires, shearing the front tires across the racetrack. Can't grip the, get the grip that he wants with him. Joey and Daniel, I know that when you have a tight car, it really limits what you can do on the track and where you can go. Totally, you know, Regan is totally right right there. You know, when you are tight, you use your front tires more, you use your brakes more, everything gets hotter, everything gets worse. And you know, something about Austin Hill is that he they have to get their program better in short tracks. If he, if he wants to win the championship, he has to run better here in Phoenix. 
wants to get that top 10, something he has yet to do. Chandler Smith continues to lead. You won't miss a thing. We're going side by side. coverage provided by Goodyear powering the race from the green flag to the checkered flag and every mile in between Goodyear more driven and look at those aerial shots love this I know you racers love to see it because you could see the action happening all over the racetrack junior motorsports having a good day three drivers in the top 10 and Sam Mayer in the one He's a guy we talked about. Stock has been down. He's just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Two DNFs. He needs to have a good day, and he's on the move. A little contact with John Hunter. Yeah, we've been watching that battle right there. Those four cars for the last 10 laps or so. And Sam Mayer is definitely the strongest one of the group as he picks his way through all of them. Uh, but, yeah, this has been a heck of a battle all the way through the field. A lot of good racing. A lot of good racing. And you know, you know who is very excited to get to lap 45? Uh, my amigo Sammy Smith. My amigo Sammy Smith, he has won here in Phoenix. And uh, obviously he, he made the, the change, you know, in the in the offseason to Junior More Sports. And right now he's been falling like a rock. He's running 22nd right now, and which, which he's a good driver here. Uh, so he, he's one of those drivers that they can, he can't wait to get to lap 45 and, and, and get some adjustments in that, uh, that Chevy number eight. Talented driver. What a moment it was for him a year ago at this very racetrack to get his first win. There's got to be a lot of adjustments that come with changing not just teams, but manufacturer as well. A lot of new things that he's dealing with. Yeah, definitely challenging. And right here you see Corey Heim, though. You know, as it come to the final lap of the stage, he's done a great job defending and holding everybody off as long as he could. As you see Chandler Smith doing a great job just managing his, his lead there up front working lap traffic and Chandler Smith has had control of this race he's led every lap so far as he makes his way around to end this stage green and white flag is out and Chandler Smith picks up another stage win Cole Custer Justin Allgaier Eric Almarola Riley Herbst in the top five no issues for the 81 so far. Chandler Smith plugging away, hoping to get a win here at Phoenix. We'll be back.
Tonight on Fox Primetime Hoops, Donovan Klingen leads second-ranked UConn as they gear up for another run at a national title in a Big East showdown against Providence. It all tips off tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox Primetime Hoops. Got a lot of hoops, a lot of racing. Chandler Smith's liking what he's seeing so far. He's led all 48 laps. They're making their way down pit road. Josh, they're coming your way. Let's start with the 98 of Riley Herbst. He said the car was getting better as the run went along, but his main concern is that we just need better drive off, having trouble rotating through the center as well. So they're going to try and help him out. As far as Corey Heim in the 26, a strong run for him so far. Said late center, just not great, having the same issues they had in practice, and so they're going to double those adjustments. Regan? It's been smooth sailing for the 81 of Chandler Smith so far. A little concern over the left front, having a little smoke early on in the race. Otherwise, the car was good, just a little bit too tight through turns three and four at the end of the run. And the double zero, Cole Custer, who's been in second place, he needs the front to turn just a little bit better right now. Doesn't want to go too far with the adjustments, though, and make it too loose in the long run. Looked like a slow stop for the 81 of Chandler Smith. Did they have an issue there? Yeah, it looked like the, the carry in the front got a little congested with his tires there. Done enough space and got all screwed up there. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to lose control of the race. We'll really see what his car has got now. But Cole Custer back to P1 with that first pit stall. Great stop for him. Chandler Smith loses three positions there. Let's check in again with Frankie Muniz. We kind of rode on board and documented his day and, and how challenging it has been. We'll check in with him in just a minute. Let's take a look back, though, at that pit stop with the 81. Yeah, you see, he's trying to he's trying to carry two tires. These things are heavy. Remember that, and they're hot, and he's able to roll it in there. He kind of just just a little sloppy, and you see, it's just enough to slow that stop down enough to uh, unfortunately lose control of the race. Just a few spots. Try to make it up on the racetrack. We're going to step aside. Stage number two coming your way next. Welcome back to Phoenix Raceways. We're getting ready for stage two to begin. And we wanted to hear from Frankie Muniz. He made his stop. So Daniel Suarez, dial him up. Hey, Frankie, your amigo Daniel Suarez up here in the, in the Fox Sport booth. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? 
I'm doing all right. I'm uh, I'm drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but let me tell you, man, we, we are so excited for you because obviously you're going to school, you know, learning from so many amazing race car drivers out there. But uh, tell us a little, a little bit about your race car. What, what is the biggest thing that you're fighting right now? Why are you trying to improve to, to, to try to go a little bit faster? Well, I, I've been a little tight all day, but I think it's, it's, it's forcing me to be a little loose mid-corner out. Um, I'm not very used to being loose, you know, as a, uh, you know, I, I don't really like it that much. I just need to get used to it. So I'm, I'm just trying to get comfortable. Obviously, when I'm getting past my lap cars, I just want to stay out of the way. And I, I need to learn how to do that quicker, if that makes sense. You know, like, I not give up so much time when I'm letting guys by because I just lose so much. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to learn. I'm having fun. But just uh, don't want to ruin anyone else's race, too. You know what I'm saying? You're doing a great job, my friend. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Have fun. Keep learning. We'll be, we'll be watching. So much, guys. He's so jacked up. So honest, right? Real emotion there. I mean, drinking from a fire hose, this has got to be unlike anything he's ever raced before. Well, there's something new around every corner for him, right? At, right now, he's pulling up to the Chews. I, I don't know if he's ever really done that many times on how to choose what lane to be on in a restart, uh, right? And he brought up, you know, cars lapping him. How do I do that without giving up so much speed, but also being respectful to the leaders? You know, the, and you got to go fast and you got to talk about, you know, how do I make my car faster? Uh, wh where am I struggling with that stuff? It, it is a lot going through a driver's mind. And honestly, he just doesn't have the experience that everybody gets to have. Josh, what do you got in the 17? Well, this is pretty cool for William Byron in the 17 car. He's got a lot of the guys with him that are on the 24 side in the Cup Series. Brandon McSwain, his lead engineer, is now doing his first race as a crew chief. And Rudy Fugel is on the other side of the pit box helping out. That's cool. That's great. Good opportunity. And that's how you find the next crop of crew chiefs. you got to give them a shot in the Xfinity Series. Green flag is in the air. Stage number two is underway. Cole Custer with control of this race for the first time today. And Justin Algar had a horrible restart on the outside, was not able to get up to speed, and that allowed Chandler Smith to get right back to second place. Now you're going to see what kind of car he's got to fire off your kind of rolls reversed as the beginning of the race with Cole Custer in the lead this time. The 20 of John Hunter Nemechek on rails there on the restart. Really good car as we ride on board with him. Obviously, there's, there, there, there was side by side in front of him. So at, at that point, he's just trying to be patient and trying to get 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 them one by one, trying to find a little bit of air. You know, you, you see how the 20 is behind the 19 and the 98 right there. Let's listen in to Chandler Smith's radio. What's the double zero change to pick up that time? Possibly shifting, which it seems like the Fords can have better luck than that than anybody else. So I, I don't, we've never really had any speed doing that, but you play around. Is it an option? I would prefer not to do it, <laughs> but if, it, if the pace falls off enough, it, it can be. That is very good to know. So he's in a Toyota talking about Cole Custer who's in a Ford, Joey. What do you think of the of how shifting can help here. Yeah, but shifting, you know, probably comes into play more as, as the pace slows down or you're in traffic racing. You know, it's a pretty big shift for these guys, meaning the third to fourth shift is a pretty big difference in the ratios. And it's not necessarily the upshift that's the problem. It's the downshift when it's really big. You got to do it really late in the corner. It's really hard for the driver to be consistent and smooth grabbing that downshift. But it's something that you see a lot of drivers do here. Justin Allgaier does it all the time here. I'm sure if we had an in-car, you'd see him doing it. No, Great. totally, totally. And, uh, and uh, like, like you mentioned, Joe, it's, it's a tool, right? That maybe you don't want to use it every lap, but it can be like a like a push to pass, a push to pass button. You know, if you're yeah. trying to get underneath somebody, you just throw that third, and then you downshift and trying to get underneath somebody else. Great battle for eighth here. Jesse Love, Sam Mayer still on the move. Brandon Jones in the nine. All three of them nose to tail. See Austin Hill get to the outside of Brandon Jones. He he got loose and, and that that transition off of turn two, you know, you're able to get down there, it's all good until you get up off the apron and it gets the car upset. That's how he got past there. Austin Hill in the tenth position right now. Never had a top five here at Phoenix. Hoping to change that today as the battle for the lead is heating up. Look at the seven, guys. I think they made some improvements to that race car. I mean, that seven was the strongest car on the racetrack before the end of the stage. It didn't have a good restart. We talked about that. But we see him move forward. This is just so tight. <laughs> you get on each other's door like that in the three. It makes me nervous. Eric Almarola joining the party, too. Let's listen to the seven. 
All right, here we go. Eddie, you cannot call the green dash. I was excited. I, I spun the tires big time, buddy. Okay. You know, we, we, we go back to that communication with the spotter, right? You know, sometimes you just have to be calm, you have to be relaxed. Uh, if, if the spotter is all excited, all jacked up, sometimes he can get ex the, the driver all jacked up as well. Uh, that's, that's what he was talking about right there. That's interesting. You feed off the energy of your spotter, right? Some like a lot of chatter, some like to get excited, Every, and others like... It's, it's cool. like a relationship, Jamie. It's like a relationship. Honestly, you have to be able to understand each other. Sometimes sometimes I don't have to say anything for Julia to know that I'm a little bit disappointed. And I feel like with the spotter, it's exactly the same thing. You know, you have to have that, that, good, uh, that good communication to be able to be in the same page. And, and Justin, you know, right there, he felt that the excitement was maybe a little bit too high, and they're going to adjust. Uh, the good thing is that they have a fast race car, and they're still on the hunt. They're still in the top five. I liked your analogy there. Your fiance, you're talking about the relationship with her and how you can parent your relationship <laughs> yeah, with Yeah, I may spotter. get. In, I may just got in trouble for saying that, but but that was my comparison. <laughs> hey, it's your anniversary, right? Of yeah, your first today day? today is actually my fifth year anniversary, and actually was right here in Phoenix. So uh, I. You can't say your what you're doing tonight because she'll hear it yeah no no no, no. I, I can't say it it's a, it's a surprise because he, she, she's watching from whatever she is right now she's watching well happy, happy anniversary. anniversary but they are racing the crap out of each other out here back and forth it's incredible eric Almarola putting these these three cars look at them pushing each other these guys are teammates hey, by the way i was about to say that good thing that they're, they're teammates eh? oh, they have been <laughs> racing each other like crazy the battle for the lead right back here in front of us with cole custer chandler smith I mean, everybody is so equally matched here. Those, those top six, seven cars that you see come by us in the screen right now, they are so equally matched. Whoever gets out front is going to have a bit of an advantage, but man, it is tight right now. I feel like... I feel like right now we're going to be able to see how good 81 is. You know, he's using his stuff a little bit more, and, and, and he will have to use his stuff more to be able to pass the 0, zero if he wants to do it. Battle right now for 11th, William Byron knocking on the door of the top 10. Cole Custer holding off Chandler Smith in Phoenix.
And you haven't missed a thing. Look at Justin Allgaier in the seven on the move up to the second spot. The 81 slips back and his teammate Eric Almirola. Looks like he made some good adjustments to that car as they battle for the third spot. This yep. isn't going to be an easy pass for Eric down there unless he clears it right there. Just Man, he made it look easy. That was not easy, just so you know. <laughs> they did a good job with that. But, Joey, that's exactly what we're talking about. The 81, it looked like he was a class of the field of front. You put him on traffic, he overused his tires a little bit, and look at him now. It's a completely different race. So now, first race, first run in stage one, he was cruising. He, I'm pretty sure he didn't, he didn't make any adjustments on his car, and right now he's looking for some adjustments. And the zero zero is the one that he's enjoying the cleaner. Let's, let's watch that pass again, Joey, that you talked about with Eric Almirola. Yeah, you see, he's able to roll to the outside of the 81 of Chandler Smith. Well, then he goes back to the inside with the run. And right here, you know, kind of entering side by side, you're not really sure how that's going to go. Eric did a good job at just hugging that yellow line and, and clearing him really easy. And, and something I think Chandler kind of gave that spot to him, too, and said, okay, I, I don't have the best piece right now. I need to manage my car, manage my tires so I don't lose more. You still have 17 laps to go. You can burn them up and they're, they're lose even more spots. Something we've seen with, with the 81 of Chandler Smith. Car fires off fast. He was pressuring Cole Custer for the lead. It just falls off hard. Justin Allgaier, four tenths back, but he's closing. Let's listen to Corey Himes' radio. He's fallen back quite a bit. Okay, just get him settled in here. Everybody, just settle in here and get your tires cooled down. Dude, I'm literally about to wreck this thing. What the? Yep, just take care of it. So he's gone the wrong direction, down in 18th now. Remember, he started up there in the top five. There's something wrong. Uh, uh, something wrong with that car. He, he's extremely loose. He either has a tire going down or, or something because he, he was a top five car a little bit ago, and now he's outside the top 20. He, he, look at him steering down the straightaway. He, he's got something broken in the back, a flat tire. Or the, or look, yes. Yeah, something yeah. is track bar. Yeah, we're looking at it. Something's wrong with it. Regan, what are you hearing? Well, Jamie, we'll have to get an update on the 26 as to what he's got going on. The 7 of Justin Allgaier, though, right now, everything going right for him. He said something interesting on the last yellow, though. Talked about the track rubber and how greasy it was getting. Joey and Daniel, when you hear track is greasing up like that, the rubber is greasy. I know as a driver, that's fun. It means you can get some options to move around and work the racetrack, do different things. Yeah, they're moving around all over the place. You see them below the yellow line, up above it, working tra lap traffic here as they go by Frankie. I mean, this is, uh, these, these guys are going to battle it out to the end of the stage with 14 to go, and you bet they both want that stage point, that stage win to get that playoff point. These stages fly by in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. 13 laps to go. Yep, there he is, Corey Heim. Just got word he is coming to pit road. As Looks you guys like know, the right rear is wheel loose. is loose. It might be yeah. coming off. Yeah, I saw the same thing, Joe. The, the right rear was kind of like wobbling. We, we, we were there, yeah. Well, Josh, Corey Himes on pit road coming your way. Yeah, and you guys were talking about it. There's an issue with that 26. You can see it. He came over the radio. The team telling him it looks like that right rear is fluttering. Corey Heim felt like something was broke. He was going to try and stay out of the way, but he said, no, I got to come in. We got to figure out what is wrong here. Unfortunate for them. Corey Heim with his best qualifying effort in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and the best for Sam Hunt Racing. And you look right here. Yeah, that, that's why it's hard to drive. <laughs> right rear tires coming off the you know, car. You know, the, the surprising thing is that he said that his car was extremely loose, but he never mentioned a vibration. I mean, I, you, you want to think that with a, whistle, with a wheel like that, you will have a huge vibration. But the problem right now, Jamie and Joe, is that the studs, they have to be damaged. You would think it's going to be harder to get it tight after that as it kind of boogers up the, the threads yes. right, to where it's hard to get it tight from there. Yeah, they may have to add some spacers or something. But SVG, Shane Van Gisbergen back in 20th battling Anthony Alfredo, learning every single lap. You know, Shane, he he's a very talented race car driver. He's obviously jumping, jumping into something completely new for him. He's very disciplined. He's putting into the work. And I'm really looking forward to see how he continues to develop uh, in the first few months of the Xfinity season. He has such a great attitude. We, we talk about that so much that that's such a big part of it, your attitude and embracing all this change and not getting overwhelmed with it. He's always smiling, and he's truly enjoying what he's doing with you guys out there on the racetrack. And I can see that being tough for Shane because, listen, Shane's used to winning. 
Shane's a winner. He's gotten used to that in Australia. It's going to take a minute for him to get used to these Xfinity cars. I expect him to be back in the winning ways here soon, for sure. Especially as you get to Coda on a road course, he's going to be stout, no doubt in my mind. We saw the rookie standings there, Leland Honeyman. From right here in Phoenix, has a bunch of friends and family here. He's third in the rookie standings. Interesting background on him. He grew up racing off-road trophy trucks with Haley Deegan. He's got a Bandolero National Championship. And now 19-year-old racing here in the Xfinity Series. Let's get to know him a little better. I'm Leland Honeyman Jr. and I drive the 42 for Young's Motorsports. I grew up in Peoria, Arizona. I was born and raised here for about 10 years, and uh, I moved out to North Carolina when I was 10 years old. Fun facts, I like Oreos. I would say just the regular normal Oreos. Oreos and milk is probably the way to go for me. You know, it's like Santa, he likes cookies and milk. I like Oreos and milk, same thing. Oreos, Joey, you're, you're turning your head. Are you not an Oreo I like guy? Oreos. I like Oreos. I just, I, interesting fun fact to have. You, you gotta <laughs> have fun facts. Hey, let me tell you, let me tell you, when I was growing up, I used to eat Oreos with milk, so I cannot say anything about that. Why don't you anymore now that you're grown up? Ah, uh, because I find out that it was not so good for you. <laughs> As we eat pizza. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> Give and take, right? You gotta... Hey, look at look at uh, Justin battle. Allgaier. You know, he had a horrible resort. He he was blaming to everyone on the radio, and right now he put all his stuff together and uh, he's moving forward. Good long run car. I mean, he could be one of the best cars out there. Watch yes. the 97 save. There you go. Woo! Woo! That's my boy right there. He left He's the learning on the racetrack. <laughs> He's learning. See why we love when you guys wear white gloves? Yes. Those, those shots, it just shows how much you're working inside that car. And I think he's learning you know, the aero position of the cars, right? Like when you get somebody, it's one thing making laps by yourself, but when you start racing other cars, you put your car in different positions, and you're getting your you're right inside somebody like that. It takes a little air off the side of that car, couldn't make it loose. As you can see, he had a heck of a save there. But he learned a lesson there as he gets back underneath Anthony, able to clear him this time, kind of slides up in front of him, learning that slide job. Well, you guys have talked about how the track continually changes. We're actually under cloud cover completely right now. Let's listen in to Eric Almirola and what he's saying about the track now. Did you put air in the right rear? No, took it out. Oh, really free. Whole track's got cloud cover right now. Super sensitive to that. Plus, we were on stickers this time. And he brought up a good point there. Plus, they're on stickers. Remember, they start the race on their qualifiers. So you're on scuffs. And they ran two runs on that. Typically, a second cycle on tires tightens your car up a little bit. So it's where it gets really hard to adjust on these cars because you don't get a clean read on the first run. Three laps to go here in stage number two. Chandler Smith swept the first stage. It's been all about Cole Custer on the second stage. If there is going to be someone out there that is going to be able to pass for the lead, I think it's going to be the seven car. Yeah, the seven car out. seems to me that is the best car so far because he's able to close the gap to whoever he's in front of him. He hasn't been able to complete the pass, but he has the speed and the capacity to be able to close the gap and, and make, a, make a good battle. He definitely has the speed. He does not ha have the versatility in his race car. You see, he's just on oh. the bottom. <laughs> he's yeah. a little loose off, too. Right now. Right <laughs> he's now. trying. He might as well use him up. He only got one more lap here at the stage. But I see him just running the bottom down here in one and two. You've got to be able to move up the racetrack to, to make the pass. Take some tires here, maybe some adjustments, and that'll leave these teams one set of sticker tires to the end of the race. Cole Custer making his way through turn three. And the green and white checkered is out. Cole Custer picks up stage number two, his first of the season. Cole Custer's been quick today, started on pole. At 42 laps, picks up the stage win. Can he hang on and get the win here in Phoenix once again?
tomorrow on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series gets heated as the best drivers in the world take on the jewel of the desert right here in Phoenix. The pre-race begins at 2.30 Eastern with the engines firing at 3.30. That's tomorrow on Fox. And remember, it is daylight savings time. We spring forward, so make sure you change your clocks, but not here in, in Phoenix, all right? How about this? Big day tomorrow for our own Joey Logano. 400th start at Team Penske, Joey. 400. It, uh, you know what's happening to me is I'm, I'm starting to go to like autograph sessions and meet fans. It's great, but they're showing me pictures of when they were like six. And now they're like full grown with a beard, and you're like, ah. <laughs> you know? My like, mom's dang. a big fan of yours. You get exactly, that. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yes. So it's been an interesting ride, but it's been great. Team Penske has been a great place to work. Uh, Roger does an amazing job leading, and a lot of fun times, a lot of uh, challenges that we've overcome over the time, over the years, and a lot of wins, a couple championships in that time. So it's been special. Yes, it has. How many more? How many more? wins how many more starts do you have in you many as i can I don't, as long as i still want me to work here <laughs> okay, i don't I'll see you going. ever hanging up the steering as long as i can win and i'm competitive i think i'll keep going i love to hear it all right pit road is open second opportunity for these teams to pit today remember chandler smith lost a couple spots on pit road with a slow stop the first time around and here come the leaders josh Start with the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. He said, I need better lateral grip. He said he can't get back to the power the way he wants to. The team told him to make an air pressure and track bar adjustment to help him turn. As far as the 98 of Riley Herbst, he said, guys, I have no grip, whether it's the front or the rear. He said it's good for about four laps, and then I lose it. They're going to tighten him up as well, Regan. Seven of Justin Allgaier struggled the first run of the race with a little bit of front turn. They made a good adjustment. He wants half that amount of the adjustment again. Still just a little bit too tight with the nose of his car. And the double zero of Cole Custer. Overall, that whole run was just a little bit too free for him with the back sliding. Said he wants just a small change to help that out and needs overall grip at the end of the run. We definitely saw that needed grip. Got pretty loose for Cole Custer at the end of that run. And the battle off pit road. Cole Custer's team gets it done. Justin Allgaier. Herbst, Chandler Smith, and John Hunter Nemechek. You want to dial up our stage winner? Let's do it. Cole Custer, Joey Logano up in the Fox booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you guys there. Well, things are looking pretty good for you. You're making me look smart because you were my pick to win the race. You got the number one pit stall. It got you the lead. You did a good job maintaining the lead through that stage, getting the stage win. Starting up front again. Looks like the seven is your, your strongest competition. What are you thinking right now? Yeah, I mean, overall, I think the field's pretty tight here with me, the 7, and the 81. I'm sure that there's some other guys that are pretty good back there, too. But overall, just got to keep this thing up here and fight all we can. Yeah, absolutely, man. You're doing a good job at it. Yeah, it looks like the, the 81 fires off fast, but you got that long haul going in that forward. So keep it up. Thanks. Hopefully get a dark horse in Victor Lane. Cole Custer, second in stage one. First in stage number two, will he hang on to it at the end? Stay with us from Phoenix.
Phoenix Raceway is where we crown a champion in the fall, and what a great place it is. How about Austin Sindrick, Daniel Hemrick, Ty Gibbs, Cole Custer last year? This is where you want to be good when it counts, the final race of the season. This race is so important for you know every series here that you know this is where the champion is crowned. It is the biggest race of the year for four drivers who make the championship four. And you better be good at Phoenix if you make that, because if not, it doesn't really matter. So you got to figure it out today. Make sure you're good when you come back here in the fall. And you see who's been good today. Cole Custer with most stage points earned 19. Some good needed stage points for Sam Mayer. How about the Saguaro Cactus out there? Oh, look at that. It's a Noah Gregson in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> On the pit box for his buddy and teammate Riley Herbst. Let's listen in on uh, Justin Allgaier's radio. I just feel like everybody's given up on recent with any respect at all. Like, just all a bunch of Like, that's just how I guess I'm going to have to start racing. Well, uh, experience and patience will pay off over the long season. Just do you. Oh, <laughs> you just do yeah, you. I, I agree with that. You know, I agree with that. I think, I think he has experience. He has the patience. And uh, I think at the end of the day, that's going to pay off. Eddie DeHaan is so chill. That's why I was surprised to hear the radio. He, he said he got too excited on the restart. Yeah, I have never seen the guy excited. No. He's going to say go this it's time. It's always <laughs> tough. He's going to say on you. <laughs> yes, this one's on you, buddy. <laughs> All right, Justin Allgaier restarting on the front row for the first time today. Cole Custer will lead him. Green flag is in the air. Third stage begins. Two and three wide, the chaos on the restarts here. It's just amazing. Great shots. Artie Kempner, our director. Just stay right there, Artie. Look at that four wide. Jesse Love in the two, trying to force the issue and gain that position. You see Austin Hill, he was way down there on the very bottom as well. These guys are trying every move they can get as it gets really tight. It funnels down in here at the turn three. There's got to be a little bit of give and take. Frank Frankie Muniz had a restart violation. You know, and as a rule here, you cannot go underneath the yellow line until you get to the start finish line. If you do that, you will have a pass through penalty. Stay above that yellow until you pass the start finish line, and then you can drop down into the dog leg and make the change or make the pass. See everyone sliding their cars, hustling it so hard here. But you got to think this could possibly be the longest run of the race for them. If there's not a caution here, this this could be a very long run. So as much as you want to get this track position early, you got to think about your tires a little bit. There is a lot of fall off here. You got to think about saving them a little bit as well if you can't get someone early. Sam Mayer, Jesse Love side by side. Mayer seems like they've made that car better than number one as he's going in the right direction. This is the battle for seventh. I think Sam Mayer, he's, he's been doing a very, very good job just getting himself in a good spot. You know, right now he's already in the top 10. We we have seen how, how fast he is with that one car. Now how we can make it to the next level, right? How can we start fighting in the top five? Let's get an update on Jesse Love Josh. I'm going to update on Sam Mayer, actually, Jamie, and we talked earlier about the fact that this is an important race in terms of getting out of the hole for Sam Mayer. He had a good mentality heading into this. He said, I can't go from zero to hero. It's all about growth and getting better over the season, so we need stage points. We need good finishes. Well, so far, he's gone from 21st into the top 10, running seventh right now. Felt good about the balance of that car all day, Jamie. Yeah, Josh, and Sam Mayer needs that top 10. Hasn't been able to do it yet this season. I'll just give you an update on the two. He's trying to get around the one, but Sam Mayer too strong right now, holding him off. Battle heating up for the lead. Look at Chandler Smith. You see a little replay here. Jesse Love on the inside. We talk about it, you know, getting loose off a of four underneath somebody. Jesse Love got a little dose of that. Unfortunately, Sam Mayer took it in the door. And this is this is kind of what we expect to see here. Chandler Smith, you know, the, you know, up here up front with Cole Custer, fires off fast. We've seen that the whole time, right? He's pulled himself up to second place. He's challenging for the lead. He's going to try really hard to get the lead and try to take control of this race again because we've seen at the end of the last stage his car falls off quite a bit harder than others. So he's going to try to make hay while he can. Chandler Smith led 48 laps today. Cole Custer 58 laps and counting. Those are the only two leaders today. Two lead changes. 
three cautions. We've got 93 laps to go. You see Cole Custer get off a of turn four really good. He's able to kind of get that power down. And that might be the speed difference, right? Maybe Chandler Smith just takes off his car's turning good. He's able to roll the center really well. And eventually his car frees up too much where he can't use that anymore. And he's too loose off. But look how he pressures him in there. Cole misses the bottom a little bit. There's contact Cole there. Contact. That is the bumper. Cole, though, able to really throttle up that exit, even with Chandler pushing him through the <laughs> corner. He's got great drive off the corner. Yeah, Cole Coulter is doing a great job right here, just driving in a defense mode right here. I mean, we all know that, you know, all four tires below the yellow line is not a great spot. But he's been trying to do that, not to give enough air to the Great battle. Chandler Smith to the inside of Cole Custer. And he'll make the pass to the lead once again for Chandler Smith. Now, Cole's got to stop the bleeding here. He's got to stay in second place. We know Justin Algar is strong on the long haul as well. It's important for him to keep that track position for when Chandler does fall off. If he does, he's close enough to capitalize. Hearing there was a little contact between Jeb Burton and Austin Hill. Cole Custer falling back again. Yeah, Justin, Justin Allgaier yeah. takes over the second spot. Riley Herbst about to go around his teammate. Yeah, and when we talked about it here earlier, you know, the top five or six cars are so equally matched here. And, and Cole said it, too, when we talked to him after the stage, how close the cars are. And you start getting, you know, losing that track position. It's going to be hard to get them back as everyone's so close. Let's get an update on Cole Custer. Regan. Well, Jamie, you see him sliding back and continuing to slide back a little bit right now as his teammate Riley Herbst to the inside came on the radio a lap ago, told, a lap ago and told his team, I am really, really loose right now, struggling with the rear grip of his car. Definitely see that as Eric Almirola in the 19 goes around. You know, the, the, the racetrack has been going through a transition. It was cloudy right now. The sun is back, off, back, but it's back on. So it, it just the, these guys are making adjustments and going back and forward right now. Well, I think it's safe to say the 81 of Chandler Smith, he likes the sunshine. The sun comes out <laughs> to the front. He goes holding off Justin Allgaier here at Phoenix.
Yeah. 82 laps to go here at Phoenix, and Chandler Smith is out front. We've talked about how good he is here in seven races between ARCA and trucks. He has two wins, six top fives. Average finish right there, boys, 3.4. Not bad. It's pretty good. Pretty good. 21-year-old from Talking Rock, Georgia. He's a two-time dad. He's juggling it all. And what a wheelman he is. He was a Toyota development driver. Left last year, came to the Xfinity Series, drove through Colleg, drove for Colleg, and now came back over to Gibbs this year. And here he is leading this race. He's done a good job taking the the advantage that he has in his race car of firing off fast and making the most of it. Now that he's got the lead, he can manage his car and his fall off probably won't be as bad as it was when he didn't have that track position. So it'll be interesting to see what Justin Algar can do as he's in second place right now. We've seen him with the long run speed late in this run. This looks like it's setting up to be a long run here where there could be a lot of strategy options playing as well. Yeah, I think the seven, if he wants to win this race, he will have to have a very long run here because there is something man there is something that for some reason he's struggling on every restart every restart doesn't matter if he's in the bottom or the top he's losing a spot so i'm pretty sure he's going to be happy to see the rest of the race go through eric almarola has been hanging right in that fourth position throughout this race pretty strong as you see in stage one stage two i'm pretty happy with his car john hunter nemechek currently fifth For the 16 is having an issue. Josh, what's AJ saying? Yeah, for the 16 right now of AJ Allmendinger, you see him, he really hasn't been able to crack the top 10. Well, now he's falling back. You see him in 22nd, and actually on his teammates' radio, the 97, they were saying that the 16 is having some engine trouble. Jamie? Mm. Not good for the dinger. <clears throat> you know something that I'm actually very impressed? Obviously, ECR engine. Three wide. Uh, Super, super good, super strong, not just in the cup stuff, but also in the Xfinity stuff. And uh, the last week, Shane had an issue with the engine, and this week, AJ. So they have something going on there with their program. It's a really good point. How about William Byron? Been talking about him, how deep he started in the field, had a bad draw in qualifying, went out first, and now he's finally cracked the top 10 and ninth. Brandon it, Jones just behind him. It's definitely taken longer for William to move up through the field than I expected it to be. You see stage one and stage two just kind of stalled out in 11. You know, he got a, a good, you know, three wide pass there, got a couple of spots, but it, it just doesn't seem like he's able to move very forward throughout it. And we see the double zero, Cole Custer, still trying to hang on out there, but losing some spots. We got some radio on him here. Yeah, I, I, it, yeah, I don't know if I, I'm understanding that right, but I don't think he's very happy. Yeah, it's gone to absolute <laughs> poop. Just what I got out of Somebody that. Somebody translate that. <laughs> yeah. Translate that yeah. for you guys. Uh, uh, and it's so frustrating for a race car driver to have the car that, man, everything is going right. He's up front, leading a lot of laps, wins the stage, starts off the next run, and horrible, right? Like, I mean, he's gone from the best car to you know, barely even a top 10 car, right? He's seventh, but he's only there because he has track position. And he keeps falling backwards as Jesse Love's right behind him. You know, and you wonder, you know, gosh, is it just a different set of tires? I'm sure they didn't make big changes to the car. And for whatever reason, this has happened to me in Phoenix too before. And you're like, <laughs> what happened? And then you put another set of tires on him. It boom, it comes life, back yeah. to life. I, unfortunately, it, sometimes that happens and you just got to stop the bleeding the best you can. Austin Hill and 13th, Regan. Well, Jamie, an uncharacteristic day right now for Austin Hill. Struggling with the same thing the entire race. He's not been able to get the front to turn on his car. They have made substantial changes, even doubling the amount of adjustment on some of these stops that they're making, not making the gains that they need right now. And the eight car of Sammy Smith, the winner of this race one year ago, of course, a different team for him. The opposite problem for him, he has been extremely loose all day long, making huge left rear changes to that race car to the tune of seven or eight rounds in the left rear. Joey and Daniel, I know you guys can explain that pretty well. That is a large change to a car. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot of rounds. It's a big change. So. And if, you, if, you, if you're putting that many rounds in the left rear or right rear, you just, you, your base is something is wrong with it, right? Because they, you start to unbalance the car and it's never good aero wise. And Sammy Smith back in the 14th position. 
But we get a good old fashioned Saturday afternoon Xfinity crank it up. Love riding on board John Hunter Nemechek to hear the throttle on and throttle off into the corner. Yeah, you know, we're getting into a long run right now. Uh, and, and, and these guys right now, they feel like they are lifting forever, but these tires, they're asking for that. So right now, you just have to be patient with your tires, trying to do not overheat the right front, do not overheat the right rear, and just trying to get into a rhythm. Getting flagged, getting close to maybe green flag stops. One stop remaining, we know that is for sure, but it's all Chandler Smith right now. 68 laps to go in Phoenix. Welcome back to the call, 1811.com. Every dig, every time, 200, easy for me to say. And we're under caution here at Phoenix for the fourth time today. Well, this makes it interesting, boys. Yes, it does. You got one set of tires left. There is 63 laps to go. You just ran, what, 40-something laps? This is a very tough call for a crew chief. If it goes green from here, you're going to be sitting here saying, ugh. And here's why we see the yellow. This is uh, Haley Deegan is out. at 15. You see her up high at the wall. 
Just gets high up into the marbles there. No, that was just a kiss. She's fine. She kissed it, kept it straight. Well, either way, that puts a, a really <laughs> interesting scenario for everybody with this stuff. Like I was saying, if you if you take your tires here, you're out of them. You get a caution with 20 to go, you're out of tires. But if you stay out, you, you possibly can be taking quite the penalty there, too. So hard to say what to do. Frankie's getting out of the car. Frankie was having a rough go at it. Multiple laps down, and you could see him there. Maybe he was having some sort of issue or something because I don't feel like he was that slow in the beginning of the race. Being told pits are open now. So what do you do? Put tire or not? Truth. I don't know, man. This is a tough one. Here they come. Okay, man. leaders are all coming. Gosh, I, nobody's gambling. Wow, I, I think, man, if you're outside the top 10, I would stay out. Yeah, you have nothing to do, right? Can you imagine in three laps if the cash comes out again? All right, Josh, they're coming your way. And let's start with the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. Said the car was much better on that last run. He needs just a little bit more. They're going to give him four tires and a slight adjustment. For the 98 of Riley Herb said he had no grip once again. They said if he can get better at three and four, they would have a winning car. Regan? Justin Allgaier was worried that this is going to be a long time to run at the end of the race on tires, but crew chief Jim Pullman said the book says pit now. That's what they did. Needs just a little bit of center turn, and the 81 of Chandler Smith has been pretty good in the inside the car. Said all he's been doing is adjusting on his tools that he can work with in the car, and that's it. All right, so no adjustments there. 61 laps to go. Final pit stop. No more sticker tires, Lang. Yeah. Mima check. You see it there in the 20, up four positions. Justin Allgaier and Herbst. Chandler Smith back three spots. There's the race off right here. The 20 car team gets it done. We'll be back. So we have Joey Logano, Daniel Suarez joining us in the booth, and what a moment it was two weeks ago. It feels like it was a month ago. This was I incredible. Was, I was in that wreck, Jamie. I was in that wreck, but it, the car was, was actually fine after that, and uh, that was a heck of a finish. Look at that finish. That was a heck of a finish. Uh, and honestly, the entire race, the entire race was intense. The intense, very, very 
crazy race. That's why the emotions were high, and, uh, and I was tired, and uh, we broke a piñata as well. It, it, was a, it was a good time. Closest three-wide finish in NASCAR history. What a moment that was for you, the celebration. Joey, I know. Incredible. I got home, and my son Hudson goes, did you see they had a piñata <laughs> after the race? And I was like, no, son, I did not see that. <laughs> That's what he picked up on. <laughs> I love how they restock it, too. They've got one ready on the truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've always got the watermelon yeah. in there for Ross. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's awesome. We have the piñata, and we have candy inside. So next time that I win, I'm going to give you some candy. Uh, that so would for, be nice of you. I could have yeah, used Hudson. a couple pieces. I, <laughs> my feelings were pretty hurt at the end of that race. That so. was a rough day for Logano. <laughs> Let's listen to the 81 radio, Chandler Smith. Am I screwing you guys today on pit stops or what's up? No, we're screwing ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. We'll drive right back up there. <laughs> well, listen, that's a very nice way to say what the heck is going on. Yeah, you I know? think he knew the answer to that question before he asked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Regan can update us on the 81. Well, Jamie, just just to update that, it was the left rear. They had trouble pulling the left rear, and you guys know tenth of a second or less can be huge here. Yeah, and he's lost the lead twice, both stops today. Last week as well. As well. That, that has been carrying since the last week. But right now, we're going to see exactly what the 20 has, you know, along with the 7 uh, on front of clean air. John Hunter Nemechek's team got the job done, got him that clean air, that track position. But the 7 trying to take the lead for the first time. And this is the and first he time. Does it. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen Justin Algar have a good start. He was on the bottom lane. I think that was part oh! of it. John Hunter Nemechek, it looked like he was wrecked by his up. teammate Chandler Smith. Now they're wrecking all over at the front of the field, guys. That was a big wreck. That was a big wreck. You know what? Everything goes back to the pit stop with the 81. The 81 was a little bit frustrated. He, he thought that he needed to get into stuff quick. And he just got into a little bit tight spot right there in the middle between his teammate and the 98. You see Riley Herbst involved there. John a lot Hunter of good Nemechek. cars. Gosh. Haley Deegan. To wait for a replay to see what happened. Riley Herbst with some damage there, quite a bit there in the left rear. Oh, oh Sam Mayer Mayer. Again. All the rays, man. Front from him. He got fired there. Up. Still got a fire. Jeb Burton. Jeb Burton there. That's a lot of fluid right it's there. Be a long caution there. Uh, his left rear is killed. That escalated quickly. John Hunter Nemechek. Seems to me with the lead. Like he, he can't believe it either. Look. <laughs> Oh, he can't believe <laughs> what, what was that? I don't know what was that, but he's not very happy. Was that happy. like we're driving crazy? Uh, what are we doing? You see John Hunter Nemechek just coming off a good restart there, winning last week. That was his stop. He, that was his position right there, man. He he was on, on the lead. He had a, a good restart, and he just got put in a bad spot right there. Parker Retzloff. Gosh. So both Jordan Anderson cars tied up in this one. Gosh, Sam Mayer, what a bummer. Trying for his first top 10 of the season, drove his way up, and let's see where it went wrong here. You see him, the three wide coming off the corner, pretty tight. You know, John Hunter definitely squeezes him down a little bit, and he just kind of run out of real estate. I mean, he already started spinning when he finished him off. I, it's just, I mean, it's racing. It's racing, man, it's racing. I think it's a combination of things. Already the 81 got, you know, himself in a very, very tight hole. The 20 didn't like that. And he pins him down on exit, and the 81 didn't have a, didn't have a way to go, unfortunately, because then the, the 98 was right on his left rear as well. Mm. Let's get a look from our. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's tight. I mean, you yeah. see that Chandler was getting you know hit from the inside, and it's kind of getting bounced around a lot there. And gosh, once he gets into you know those cars on the bottom, you're, just, you're sitting in the middle of the racetrack, and here comes all these cars. Right at you. Look at Parker just hoping they get just by there. Look oh, at that Eric save. Almarola getting in it. So William Byron into the wall. Yeah, that's oh. that's Parker tough one. Parker Redslop just destroyed up at the wall. You know, you know who did a great job? Parker Kligerman right yes, there. Yes, he did. I mean, sometimes the best move is to do not move. <laughs> just <laughs> wait for things to settle, and then you make your adjustment. Look at him. He's still slowing down. But you and, watch uh, his hands. Yeah, yeah, he was studying the whole thing. Because he's slowing down, so the car is moving when he's slowing down. But he did a and great job. And avoids another one. He is, he, that's Herbst. experience right there. Well done, Parker Kligerman. It's right on board with John Hunter.
Man, from, uh, from that uh, angle, it doesn't look like he was pinching him down. I mean, he wasn't his racing line. So violent from that angle. Yeah, I mean, you just, I mean, you're, you're, it, like we said, it's, it's tight coming off the corner there. You, you're, you're three wide. I mean, everybody's into each other. Late race restart. At the front of the field, though. That's yeah. And that's Third hard on back. for everybody. Think about this. You're going straight, There's, and you're directly behind another car. You can't see where the wreck's evolving to, like where it's going to go next. Like it's, like it's just smoke in front of you, and all you can do is slow down, but the next guy runs in the back of you, and it just becomes a really tricky spot when everyone's that close to each other. A lot of like wrecked race cars, we're told believe 11 cars with damage. William Byron there, left front damage. We, we saw him get squeezed into the fence a little bit, and the 20's still running, but obviously a lot of damage there. Big cleanup here with 54 laps to go under caution for this, the big one at Phoenix Raceway. Seven pit crew, they're happy. They made it through the leaders right now. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Well, the red flag has come out here at Phoenix with 54 laps to go, 11 cars involved, and a big cleanup. So let's go back and take a look at the replays here, exactly what happened, and watch. We talked about it, Parker Kligerman. Yeah, and you're gonna see him kind of the back of your screen here. As oh, they yeah. start to wreck, coming. John Hunter is going to end up right in front of. Right there, the 48. The 48. There he is there. Watch his hands. So, sometimes it's better not to do anything. Just slow down. Right there, he's slowing down as hard as he can. And he's just waiting to see where the 20 is going to go because he's already changing direction. I think they made eye contact right there, John Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> they say, like, hey, hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> but not just that. He, he thinks, okay, I made it through. And then there is another incident happening after that. Here's your eye contact shot. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, good I'm to see you, backwards. man. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Parker is telling him, buddy, you are going the wrong direction. <laughs> Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. <laughs> That's all you think of in those moments. Parker Kligerman, great save. 
He sits seventh right now, and officially wow. we're hearing 13 cars involved. Look at all in the, the speed he's driving. That's a that's a beach right there. That's a beach right that's, there. That's taking all the sand of the desert and put it right here. That's a lot. Well, wow. your emotions go from pegged to now we're dead stopped. So let's dial up the guy we were just talking about, Parker Kligerman. Let's talk to him. Parker Kligerman, Joey Logano in the Fox booth. You got us? Got you, buddy. Hey, we were joking that you made eye contact with John Hunter as he was backwards. You did an incredible job avoiding that wreck. What was going through your mind when you saw all that? I ah, appreciate it. Glad you guys uh, saw that. You know, I just see what every great race car driver does, and that was close my eyes and hope for the best and then uh, <laughs> come out the other side and take credit for it. But, no, we <laughs> thank you to everyone who uh, didn't run us over. I, I didn't have much of a choice. I kept wrecking and blocking the track, and I just had to deal with those deals where you're slowing up, watching the mirror slow it up, watching the mirror, and trying to find that hole out of it. And uh, finally, it opened up for our spike light core Chevy that uh, started to come around to be as fast as the internet. So let's see if we can uh, give this race a little bit of a run for its money and turn around from the first half that we had here. All right, man. Well, you made it entertaining for us. And uh, I mean, I like to think we do a lot more than that as race car drivers. So <laughs> take some credit, would you please? Here. OK. Just between <laughs> you and I and anyone else listening out there. Uh, it was all skill. All, <laughs> all right, man. Have a good one. <laughs> so he finds himself in a nice position, as do these three at the front of the field. Regan. Well, Jamie Sam Mayer checked and released from the infield care center. We're making too much of a habit of meeting here, Sam. Looked like you almost had that cleared. What did you see from your perspective? Uh, I mean, I couldn't really see anything, unfortunately. That's why I was involved, I think. Uh, just a bunch of people got loose up top. I was watching it a bunch in the care center. Uh, just people not really racing smart, unfortunately, but super proud of this Tire Pros Chevrolet team. I mean, we kicked tail today. We we came from the back and we were up front getting stage points and doing our job. Uh, I'm super proud of everybody at the fab shop, engine shop at HMS. Uh, you know, obviously this is really unfortunate, but uh, there's lots to be proud of here. Uh, I got to make laps, probably double the amount of laps I made this year, and uh, I get to go have a weekend off and go to Coda and get some road racing in me. All right, thanks, Sam. Well said. I mean, it's been a frustrating season for him. He's like, what in the world now? Had a great car, going in the right direction, and now he finds himself with his third DNF in four races. You know, sometimes when things are going very bad, you just have to smile, right? And I feel like that's what he's doing right now. You know, he's just trying to just smile, laugh at it, and, and trying to flip the page because it's, it's pretty bad what has been happening to him the last few weeks. So John Hunter had restarted on the front row, and then quickly things changed. This is him trying to wheel his way through it. Yeah, and I think once he realized, I am out of control, you, know, you see him moving his hands and all, trying to regain control of the car where he can, but he's trying to keep his hands off the wheel. Cause it, sometimes that wheel snaps and it moves really quick and you can get your, your fingers or your wrist kind of twisted up in that. But yeah, gosh. Yeah, he just finished him off right there. I mean, he, I think the 20 was going to save him. It, it, it was going to save the car, but just the 81 was right there. And he finished him off right there. But uh, unfortunately, very, very tough deal right there. And it's tough, too, because you say it, Chandler kind of finished him off, and he did. But if he lifts, he he's going to get run yeah, over, and he, he gets get wrecked. wrecked, you know? And, and it's just everyone's so tight on each other. You know, if that's a few laps after a restart, there's a little bit more separation. Yeah, it might turn out a little differently. But right there, it's like, man, if you, you're kind of just in a bad spot. But, but you know what, Joy? We go back to the pit stop. I think that if Chandler Smith was having a better stop, he was going to be more calm. He was going to be more relaxed. Maybe he wasn't going to push the issue to go three wide in the middle right there. So we go back a couple laps before that, and I feel like that's kind of like the reaction of why that happened. Jeb Burton in the 27, Parker Retzloff in the 31, both have been checked and released. As we continue under a red flag for cleanup for this big incident, we'll be back from Phoenix Raceway to continue NASCAR Xfinity.
spring, football is about to hit a whole new level as the USFL and XFL come together to unleash the United Football League. Opening weekend kicks off March 30th on Fox with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions. They'll take on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. The UFL this spring on ABC, ESPN, FS1, and Fox. And The Rock has a big part in this. Awesome to talk to The Rock in Daytona about the UFL and, and what's about to come on March 30th. That'll be fun. Sounds pretty awesome. He's a big man. Yes, I've never is. seen him in person until Daytona. That's a big boy. A little spring football action. And look at this. Engines are refired. Yellow has been displayed. Let's take a look back at the restart here. So Chandler Smith had that little slow an issue on pit road. And you see him here in the 81. Yeah, he has a, a good restart here on the top. Kind of seen an opening there. Got closed up by Riley Herbst. Really tries to dive it in there again. Finally gets in there. I mean, it's a tight squeeze, but he's there. And it just runs out of space. And, you know, you can't blame him for making no. the move and sticking it in there. He's got a, a really fast car to fire off. He knows if he gets in the lead, he can win the race. It's worth making the big move. It's just, ah, it's tough. And and that's his teammate, too. So it's yeah. going to be a really weird Monday. Yeah, but, but, man, I don't think he did anything wrong. He was just being aggressive, but I don't think he was being, you know, overly aggressive. He just things got tighter than what he was expecting. Yeah, and then, you know, here we just see the carnage from that. And unfortunately, it, it ties up so many other really content. good cars because it happens in the front. So a lot of fast cars got wiped out. John Hunter Nemechek was checked and released from the infield care center. Frustrating. What a day he had. It restarted. His team got him out there to P1. So he restarted first on that restart. And then, boom, things changed quickly. Chandler Smith's car is good to go. Justin Allgaier is the leader. So you heard Sam Mayer mention that we're off next weekend with the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and then we're going to Coda, Circuit of the Americas. We're going to go road course racing. You guys like this place? Austin. Oh, it's it an amazing place. It is a lot a of fun. Really cool place and a lot of very, very intense racing. Some new patches on the racetrack we've heard about, so could change the racing a little bit up from that standpoint as well. Cool let's, city, though. Let's unveil the booth for that weekend. Of course, Adam Alexander will be back. Thinking of Adam and his family, by the way. Oh, we're back together. Oh, we're hey. back together, amigo. Oh. Did you know that? Look at you, too. I, I knew I was going to be there. I, didn't know you I were knew I was going to be there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, you're just part of our team. You're in here every single week. You I can't love get being here. I have fun doing this stuff. What else am I going to do on a Saturday afternoon? <laughs> Watch an Xfinity race with my amigo. I mean, who's better? Amiga. 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 I like that. Well, it's I good like to have it. you. You do a great job. Well, thanks for having me. And we know I, you don't I, I'm sit. glad you guys invite me back every week. <laughs> <laughs> we know this guy doesn't st sit still very well. If you could see his leg in his race car, every time he's behind the wheel, his leg is shaking. Just cannot yes. wait to get going. <laughs> My wife always goes, can you just sit still for a second? I'm like, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> I, can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Joey, what's the call you just got from your wife at home? Oh, she just told me my son pulled his own tooth out, which was awesome. But then he looked at it and passed out. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he's okay. But, uh, yeah, that's what happens during red flags, apparently, and we're all the way out here in Phoenix. So Never a dull moment at home with three little ones. Never. Never. If you only knew. Every, every time when I was younger that I was going to go uh, do some kind of work with blood, I had to go into a hospital with a, with a Coca-Cola for real to get some sugar because if not, I was passing out Oof. every single time. The Sounds like a stuff. good excuse to get some sugar. <laughs> no, for, for real. <laughs> hey, so it's March 9th. Let's get a little history lesson. Famous things that happen on this date in history. Oh, look at that young Kyle Busch. Yeah. It's the first win for Twitter. First, first Mustang. First Mustang. It's a big day. Barbie introduced by Mattel, 1959. What a comeback she's made. I mean, not that she went anywhere, but that movie just has, it's just shown a whole new generation of little kids, what she was all about. And also, I like this one, Notorious B.I.G., probably, arguably one of the greatest rappers of all time, died on this day in 1997.
still listen to it. You like rap? Uh, I do. I do. Uh, it's not, I'm not... I'm not super fan of it, but I, I do like rap. Yeah. Joey, you don't strike me as the rap type. Do you like Corey's oh, PNG? Why, why do you think that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I listen to some old school rap, not quite today's rap. I, so I you like and, and country music more so than anything country at the moment. Country music and like rap? Country music. Well, yeah, hey, That's I'm, not I'm the same a well-rounded thing, individual. What about Pitbull? You ever listen to Pitbull? You ever heard of that guy? Yeah, I, I think I know who is that guy. <laughs> I listen to him. I like yeah. that. You got to go on stage with him <laughs> yeah, in Nashville, I mean, right? That, that was quite an experience. That guy, th there is nobody else that he can crank up a, a, a you know, an stadium like he does. He's, that guy is unbelievable. His energy. He's so small and has the most energy <laughs> of any human. Well, Justin Outgeier has taken the bottom, and we've seen the leader kind of go back and forth different ways on this, but Justin definitely likes the bottom. Uh, I like it, too. If I'm the leader this late in the run, you're in control of the car on the outside of you at this point. Guys, look at Sheldon Creed. We haven't talked much about him today. Second row in the 18. Nicole Custer with another shot at it after missing that wreck. Be 49 laps to go here. Justin Allgaier, Chandler Smith, Sheldon Creed, Cole Custer back and forth. This is one of the first times we've seen Justin Allgaier be able to clear to the lead early in a run like this. But we know Chandler Smith fires off really fast. He's going to have to definitely deal with some pressure. You see Parker Kligerman there in that spiked coolers, the orange and, and white, number 48. Told he's got some smoke. It looks like he may have a fender rub on the left side there. He's got some damage there yeah, on the, the left, left side rear. for sure. We well, yeah, have some contact back here. The nine, the 9 has a lot of damage in the front of his race car as well. well we mentioned 13 cars involved. Wow. I think there were a few more as well with some fender damage. Yeah, you see fender rubs and noses knocked in on the nine. Yeah, the, the hoods, you know, you see that, that gap there. I mean, it's definitely crazy. You see Cole Custer back in the, the hunt here, though. Let's see if he's got his car woken back up to be able to move his way back into contention to win this thing. So violent, dropping down on that dog leg. See if he can make it work here, trying to take over the third spot. And he does. He does. Not so fast. The crossover by Sheldon Creed. Look at Jesse Love just waiting for his turn back there, running fifth. How about the rookie in his fourth career race in the Xfinity Series? He's yeah, but right here, right here, Cole Coaster, he's in the, he, he's where he wants to be. He wants to be on the outside, and, and, uh, and I think that right here he's going to be able to chase, chase you down, and then be able to be in the in the in the in the best spot uh, for corner one and two. Yeah, if he can kind of pin him on the exit and try to get a a good run off. It looks like Creed's going to get a good run with him, though. Oh Definitely gave him some space down there on the bottom. They think car is pretty good. It's pretty good. Or maybe the zero zero is not as good as as, uh, as we thought it was going to be. And you see on the left side of your screen, this is what we talked about. Chandler Smith firing off fast. He's starting to reel in the seven of Justin Allgaier. Three wide. Justin's going to have his, his work cut out as they're three wide back three here Three wide for the third spot. And just behind them, Ryan Sieg following up that great run, that top 10 run for him at Las Vegas. He had a speeding penalty, by the way, on lap 95. Sieg didn't. Look at him now in the sixth spot. You see Jesse Love down there. You know, very impressive rookie for what he's done so far earlier in the season. And you see right now doing a good job, keeping his nose clean, kept his car clean all day. 44 to go. He's got a clean car, and he's in the top five. And what about my amigo Shane Vance Gisburn? He's very, very close to get a top 10. He's right there running 11. Um, Look at battle for the lead right here. Chandler Smith trying to take it from Justin Allgaier. And this will not be an easy pass for Chandler Smith at all. Justin Allgaier, is a, he knows how to make his car wide. He knows how to make it difficult for someone to pass him. It's all about constantly applying the pressure to Justin. Any moment you can't. Oh, wow. Oh, he gave him a break right there because, oh, my God, the, 80, the, the 81, he has options. Oh, we got 28 off the pace. Off. Kyle Sieg, the younger brother of Ryan Sieg, we were just talking about issues here, but it looks uh, like he, right might, down. He, left from, he left might be able to get flat. it down to pit road, and he does. We stay green. The run that Chandler Smith got off of turn two right here, the last lap, was absolutely incredible. You look for Justin to try to do something different because that was not pretty for him. The 81 just has so like many did. different options. It doesn't matter if he's in the middle, in the top, in the very apron. He's just quick. 42 laps to go. Remember, they got to make these tires last to the very end. This is their last set of tires. This is all they got. So 
Don't burn them up too early. If the seven car can hold the 81 for 10 laps or so, I think that uh, that he's going to be okay. But right now, as as we know, Joey, the the, the 81 is 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 in is on his zone right now in the in the in the short run. He is, but I, you can see him come off a of turn two there, leaving black marks I saw off the that. corner. He's trying really hard. He's using all he's got. You see back here to Jesse Love and Cole Custer. They're still battling it out. There's your boy. Shane Van Gisbergen oh, my back boy, there. Right there. He can't shake these two. He's been battling with them for at least half of the race. No, oh, he's been doing a good job. Just steady, learning, getting a little bit better, running all the laps because that's his goal right now. Running every single lap to be able to continue to to build a notebook and continue to be better. And that's the battle for 11. Shane Van Gisbergen in 12th. Anthony Alfredo just ahead of him. And these guys have been going back and forth. These two, this has been a so fun good. race to watch. These two crossing each other up, back and forth, slide jobbing each other. It's been pretty entertaining to watch these two's, uh, their race craft, really just kind of going back and forth as they have pretty equal cars. Let me tell you something. The, the zero, 00 car was such a good car in stage number two. It's crazy how things change for stage number three. Right now, it seems to me that this, he just doesn't have the speed that he had before. The damage this car the doesn't nine. have the speed as the nine of Brandon Jones. That car is beat up. I guarantee you that gap that's unsealing the hood from the bumper is killing the downforce on the front of that car. Anthony Alfredo, though, with a great run, trying to work his way into the top ten. Just one more spot, and he'll be there. You know, we talk about Jesse Love, who's running fourth right now. He's had some good runs, led a lot of laps this year. Two poles, but he doesn't have much to show for it. His best finish was 12th at Atlanta, so looking for his first top 10. And he might even make it a top five today. Maybe so. Great racing right here, eh? With a, between Chain and, and, uh, and Alfredo. They're racing pretty good. Nice and clean and aggressive. Back to the lead, 37 laps to go. Justin Allgaier wants to hang on to it, get his first ca third career win here at Phoenix. Three and a half now, he has no pressure on him. Radio silence, please. Uh, he, he gets to a point where he don't want to hear nothing no more. Yep, we have uh, entered that zone. <laughs> <laughs> this radio has been so entertaining today. So that's them talking on channel two. So a lot of times these, these teams have two channels that they talk on. One is to the driver and channel two. A lot of times the, the crew chief will talk to the spotter a little bit and give some information that way. So the spotter can relay that info. In this case, uh, Justin apparently doesn't want to know anything. He's a he's driver, eh? <laughs> yeah, and I, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I want to hear somebody in my ear every single second I were around this racetrack because I want to know all the information. I want to know, am I pulling away? Where is he running? You know, how hard do I need to run right now? Because with 35 laps to go, I want to get out to a second and a half lead, but I don't think I want to get more than that. Exactly. Because if a late race caution comes out, I got to have something left in the tank because I know I'm not going to be able to come down pit road and put tires on. So you don't want to use it all up. And, and that might be what Chandler Smith's doing right now. He might realize I'm out. I can't catch him. I'm going to save my stuff. Justin Allgaier's got command of it, about one second lead over Chandler Smith. We're going to step aside. You won't miss a thing. We're going side by side.
<laughs> so good. Is that your dance move, Joey? Uh, that's, uh, you know, when they say fake a victory, you're like, what do I do? You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't feel it's right hard without to, your steering wheel. It's hard to fake celebrate, just so you know. Like, I mean, the real emotion is the real thing. But when you go to these shoots and they, they want to act like you're celebrating, it's always awkward. It's a very I, weird moment. I'm not naughty by nature, by the way. That was, <laughs> that was good comeback, guys. Thank you. That was funny. That was good. That was good. Good job, Fox. Regan, you join in this? You want to dance too? Jamie, I don't think anybody out here wants to see my <laughs> dance moves. They're pretty poor. Uh, somebody whose dance moves we might want to see, though, Jesse Love continuing to have a great day right now. Biggest complaint that he's had all day long, just a little bit too tight for, through the center, having to wait on the throttle. Interesting conversation I had with his crew chief, Danny Stockman, earlier. He mentioned how good Jesse is in the car, how quiet he is, and how he does not really say a lot. He fixes himself, doesn't complain about the car. Josh? Well, it's been a good day for Sheldon Creed. Remember, he started in the back for an unapproved adjustment at the start of the race made their way all the way up to the third position right now for Sheldon Creed right now is playing two positions the team told him you got to play defense against the two of Jesse Love but also keep an eye on the drivers in front of you as they try and make up ground they said he's got to continue to work on one and two they said three and four is just as good as the guys in front of him but one and two he needs to figure something out to gain some ground on the leaders a yeah, heck of a run for Sheldon Creed from the back to third still digging in front of him, let's hear the radio from Chandler Smith. Still nothing out back. Room to search here. If you can open your entry into one up a little bit to a later apex, if it'll help you. Don't talk to somebody. Man, no, nobody wants to hear their, their, their spotters today. Stop talking so much. I don't, sure. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> He's just trying to help you out, man. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to do. Uh, you know, I mean, as a driver, you, you, you're kind of like, hey, you know, I want to move around the racetrack. I want to try different things. But sometimes your car just doesn't let you, you know, to do different things. There you see all the spotters on the roof. They got a great view of what's going on. So their information is valid. But when they're, in, when they're not inside the race car, they're not feeling the feelings of the driver typically has, right? Or I'm, I'm loose here, I'm tight here, I can't make it work when I do that because of the balance of my car. It's just information, you don't have to use it. We told Chandler nothing out back, he was right. At the time, he had about a five second lead over third place Sheldon Creed. That gap is closing slightly. Yeah, you know, the, the, the sporters have such a big role because as Joey mentioned before, you know, they, they are in communication in channel number two with all the engineers, with all the cruises, with all these guys that are, that are watching the data, that are watching SMT, and the sporter is the one that has to relate all that information to the driver. Some drivers like a lot of information, like Joey, some drivers don't like any information, like just single guy right here. Uh, and and, and both, both systems work, it's just preference, right? Well, what, how much information do you want? How much information do you need? Joe single guy, obviously he didn't want any information. He wanted everyone to be quiet and he's stretching the lead. So uh, it's just preference. No, oh, it depends on who's giving you the information, right? Yeah. If it's just talk and there's no actual good info, then yeah, don't say nothing to me. <laughs> Maybe that's the case. Yeah. Justin Allgaier with a two-second lead over Chandler Smith with 21 laps to go here at Phoenix Raceway. Been an interesting day. I mean, we had the big one at Phoenix. We never expect a big wreck like that here in Phoenix, right. uh, unless it's a wreck in the front. i tell you what, something about uh, the strategy of this race, right? We talked about you know, when that caution came out, they all pitted. No one stayed out because history showed that it was going to go green. <laughs> you know, right now they're looking pretty smart that they all pitted right now. If you stayed out in that moment, you'd have a hard time staying on the lead lap at this point. Look at these guys on the lead lap having a heck of a day for 16th and 17th. Nick Lights in the 92 from Chesapeake, Virginia. The 29 right next to him, Blaine Perkins. Battling each other. There's battles everywhere. It's not just up front. I mean, these guys are digging for every position, even back for 16th, 17th position. And, and you know what, Jamie? This is a big deal for these small teams. You know, to finish in the top 10, in the top 20, sorry, it's, it's almost like a victory for these small teams. Some of these teams, they only have a few employees uh, full-time. So for these guys to have an opportunity to 
to compete and show up all the way in the West Coast for Phoenix and, and be running in the top 20 is it, it, a, it's, it's a big deal for them. At 42, Leland Honeyman from here in Arizona. Got to know him a little bit earlier. He's having a great run. In the 15th spot, there he is, 19-year-old. Wheel man in the trucks, off-road trucks, wanted to go stock car racing, racing since he was a little boy. And he likes Oreos. And he likes That's Oreos. Fun fact. With milk. No, <laughs> With milk. I know. I would have thought, I mean, we know more exciting things about him than that, but that's a big deal. He likes Oreos and let us know. So he'll probably get Oreos from all of his fans now. <laughs> Kyle Weatherman had a really good qualifying effort earlier today, driving for DGM Racing. He's up in the 14th spot. Anytime there's a huge crash like that that wipes out a lot of the leaders, these teams that, you know, finish, you know, 15th to 20th, most weeks have an opportunity to get a top 10 and, and, and clicking off a top 10 for those teams is such a big deal. So that opportunity is sitting right in front of them right now to, to, to do something really special. And, uh, you know, they're, they're all going to fight to try to get that top 10 stat. Showing our rookies in the field and where they're currently running. Of course, Haley Deegan was caught up in that big one, so she is out. Jesse Love, rookie of the day, fourth right now. And Shane Van Gisbergen, SVG, your man, running 11th still. Yeah, Shane, Shane is, is just a very, very talented, experienced race car driver. And, you know, Joey and I were talking earlier about how Shane has to get used to everything. You know, he these guys used to be contending for wins uh, week in and week out um, back in Australia. And right now, it's almost like he had to press the reset button, start from zero, start to learn a new culture, start to learn new racetracks, a new race car, new everything. So so it's a, it's, it's a process, and, and I feel like he's taking the challenge and he's doing it all at what 33 years old i think he is 33 34 years old 34 years old and by the way he showed up in the cup race first time in nascar streets of chicago <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> <You're>, embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> put on a show got the win so now he said i want to go full time in america and learn all the ovals but guys we talked about the next race for the xfinity series coda we're going left and right road course race it's right in his wheelhouse yeah that's going to be a lot of fun to 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 see you know i'm actually so excited i'm going to be here in the booth with you guys uh, and with my amigo Adam Alexander as well because you know it's going to be an amazing battle front between Shane AJ Almendinger which is going to be they're going to be teammates and some other amazing road course drivers that the Xfinity series have so it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch Sammy Smith had fallen off a bit hadn't talked much about him and he's up to the seventh spot Ryan Sieg in eighth Great run for Sieg and Sieg Racing. Top 10 at Vegas, holding steady here even after having that penalty on pit road. You know, Sieg is one of those guys that he's so experienced. He knows when to push hard, when not to push too hard. And when there is opportunities, he's always there. You know, that's how right. he has wow. you know, won a couple races in the past. And, and, and right now he's about to fight for a position with a car that has more than double the amount of budget that he has. How about the car they just went around? William Byron, what a day. S started mid-pack, took him a while, got up to the top 10, and then obviously he was caught up in that big wreck. He's now three laps down, back in 25th for William Byron. What about the rookie, uh, Jesse Love? He's not done. <laughs> he no. wants one more spot. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a tough one. You know why? Because that's the old driver of number two. The last thing you want is for your old race car to pass you. Is that right, Joy, or not? I'm sure it's probably crossed his mind at some point here. He that's, said, that's the stuff we want well, to hear. That, okay. There is 10 laps to go, you know, and, and that's, they're going to have a good battle to the very end, uh, you know, as, as they're racing each other, you know, <laughs> pretty hard right now. So it'll be a fun battle to watch. Justin Allgaier, what a race for him, trying to win for the third time at Phoenix and he's one win away from tying Tommy Houston and his own boss Dale Earnhardt Jr. for 11th all time in wins so yeah it's not a surprise to see Justin up front right here especially in the long run he's always good um, and look at these two guys these guys are not done they're not done and I guarantee you that these guys are gonna race super hard look yep. at this I, I like how you know Jesse's trying to work underneath that that apron there underneath that yellow line it's flat as it gets close to the wall 
on the exit. Sheldon Creed does there on the outside. He gives him some good space down here as Jesse's going to try to throttle up as he's at his quarter to try to clear him, not going to. They're going to be side by side, dead heat into turn one here. With the lap traffic up ahead, going to have to navigate as the laps are continuing to count down. It's the longer the run goes and as a track gets wide like it is, and, and Sheldon's really figured out how to run the top down at one and two, it's going to be very hard for Jesse Love to be able to make that pass. He gave him the bottom right there. Yep, he, he left a little gap there to the bottom, uh, right? Yeah, that's just good racing. That's fun racing. So good. You see Sheldon Creed's numbers here. Five starts. Got the Truck Series win and the championship locked up back in 2000. I mean, these guys have been going at it the whole second half of this race. Yeah, yeah. This so is, this good. This is great racing. This is great. I mean, you can see how the two car is a little bit better, has a little more speed. Well, really, the experience of of Sheldon, you know, is, is paying out right there. He knows he knows how where to position his car to make the life impossible for uh, for Jesse Love. Yeah, you could definitely see how Jesse Love's got the fast car. He's just got to find a way around him. Got to run different lines, try to find the run. You know, he's broken the plane of the bumper, right? He's gotten side by side with him, no problem. But clearing him on the bottom stuff. Look how oh, low did you see that? Oh my he God. is. Justin Allgaier minding his own business up front. He's got a three second lead now with five laps to go. Oh, oh no, oh. left rear down. Left, left rear down, down. Oh, the leader. Leader. Leader, leader goes ball. around. Oh no. Allgaier. Oh my God. Allgaier in the wall. What a change of events here. Caution is out. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Left here just went flat. Gosh, we saw how low he just was off of turn four I down wonder, there on the apron. I wonder if he felt something that he was so low in corner three and four. Yeah, because it seemed odd to be it's, down that yeah. low. And there's nothing you could do as a driver, and that thing popped up. I saw it. Uh, it's your, you're along for the ride. What a heartbreaking moment. The yeah. leader destroying the field. Got it, got it beat. Now he's sitting here oh, stuck. Wow. Oh. What a heartbreaker. Justin Allgaier. I just said he was checking out. Not he, a worry in sight. He was in cruise control. At this point, he was in cruise control. He was only waiting for the white flag to, to bring it home. Four laps to go, guys. Oh. 52 laps. It's going to be a green one checker. Led today. All right, here's a replay. A you see Justin go through the dog leg here. Everything looks fine and right, right there, there. See that smoke. Yep. That's that's it. Comes right apart. Gone. The longest run of the of the day. Oh, gosh, my heart's broken for him. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's what you just sit there in disbelief. <laughs> yeah. That's over. Like, how can that happen? That's it. It's already flat right there. Yeah. As soon as he hits the brakes, it just comes apart. Not that he, he could have done right there. See it in real time. <sighs> Crunch. Mm. I bet Sheldon Creed was just in shock seeing that happen to the leader right ahead of you. Hey, by the way, uh, how many wins Sheldon Creed has? None. And guess what? He's going to be in the front row. That guy is all or nothing. Eight runner-up finishes for Sheldon Creed yeah. today. Maybe the day. Frustration. Frustration right there. Oh, gosh. Mm. And 100% and under, understandable. I mean, er, er, anyone in that position would be exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, gosh, you just... He did everything right. He did a great job managing the race, staying up front, making his long runs good. And these fans can't believe it either. Look at him. Uh, uh, oh, their man. team is his from family. I'm winning mean, to a DNF, here. just like that. Ugh. This sport sometimes I, I sometimes I get done. I go, this sport sucks. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> man, you can do everything right, and then something like that happens, and it, and it gets you. It, it's hard. This is such a hard sport. It's a sport that you lose way more than you win, right? I mean, a, a, a tremendous seasons winning more than five races. That means you lost thirty, thirty, <laughs> give or take, right? Like it's it's so tough to mentally get through this sport and for Justin Algaier right now 
so hard to understand how that can be possible. And on the other side, sometimes you get a gift handed to you, right? You get yourself in the right position that you could pick it up, and maybe it's Chandler Smith's day, maybe Creed, maybe Jesse Love. I mean, between the top three, there's only one win between them. And yeah. this, I tell you what, now, we, we talked about Justin and, and the bad luck he's got. You said right. They got good luck. Now. But they are restarting on some very old tires. There's no tires left. You're not coming down pit road anymore. They are going to be spinning their tires on the start. They're going to be sliding into the corner. You got, like you said, Daniel, you got some guys looking for their first win. There's going to be contact. If Chandler Smith can't clear into turn one, you can it's going to be fun. Bet on some serious yeah. stuff happening. It's going to be fun. <laughs> for us, for us, it's going to be fun. Usually when we go NASCAR overtime, things are going to get fun. I mean, that's heartbreaking. This will set us up for a heck of a finish, no doubt. So a little race recap from the start. Josh Williams spins early. Damage for him. Dawson Cram. Chandler Smith dominated, led every lap of stage number one, gets the win. Then Cole Custer, he dominates stage two, gets the win. And stage three, right here, the big one at Phoenix. 13 cars involved. Big time cleanup, a lot of good cars out of this race. And the seven does what he needs to do on pit road, gets the lead. Cruise control, like you said, Daniel, and then this heartbreak out of nowhere loses the left rear. So the pits are open. We're told that the eight of Sammy Smith came down. I mean, I, I, I want to think that all they have left is a, is a set of scuff tires. He has scuffs with less laps on them, so cold scuffs with less laps. Anthony I guess. Alfredo in as well. Let's see what they have. Yeah, the scuffs, yeah. scuff sets. Which I mean is a, a little better. And if I guess if you're in the back of the lead lap, maybe you throw them on and it'd be a little better than what's around you. But yeah, for a green white checker, there's not much time. You're yeah. not going to be able to really yeah, what, what, use what, them a lot. What he's hoping is to have another caution, right? To have a little bit more time to, to maybe crack right. the top five or something. Which is a good chance of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the way we've been doing, yeah. So we've got two Toyotas up front right now. We've talked about the success, the dominance that they've had here. Joe Gibbs Racing, 16 wins, 50 top fives, 81 top tens, almost by any team. It's just been one of those places, Daniel. You said it doesn't matter what car they have, what rule changes, what they do to the racetrack, they win. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I was actually pretty fortunate, Jamie, to be part of some of those numbers because, you know, we had some race, uh, great race cars when I was in the Xfinity Series in 2015 and 16 uh, with Joggy Racing. Well, Sheldon Creed has been waiting, knocking on that door, has come close so many times to getting his first career win. You see it there. Most runner-up finishes without a win. Sheldon at eight. I'd say he's due with that many second-place finishes, yeah. and he's going to have a great opportunity here as he's second place. You know, he's going to be on the front row. He's going to take the front row, I'm sure. What a story it would be if he comes from the rear to win this thing. Now, where it's going to get a little interesting, the 81 and the 18, they are teammates. I mean, the way of the 81... <laughs> <laughs> Ship the 20. I, I, I think it's a free game. I don't think they care <laughs> <laughs> at this point. And then you got Jesse Love, who's looking for his first win. Cole Custer, who we know was strong early in the race, kind of fell off there. But hey, when you're a green white checker in the first two rows, you you got a chance. I think I think like you say, Joey. I think everything is gonna be dictated by the. The, the launch that they have in the research zone, heading into corner one. If that's side by side, side by side by exit of corner two, I think the race is going to be very interesting. Absolutely, there's the trophy. They're going for the, for the chrome shovel. shovel. Got to get that chrome shovel. <laughs> and they're going through the shoes here. So what, what will you take, bottom or top? <sighs> Man, this late, I'm, I'm liking the bottom because I think everything's going to slide up, such yeah. as these old tires. Look at this right here at the top five. It's gone now, but. Not a ton of wins, especially the top three. Just one win between them. I'm thinking a lot of stuff's going to slide up in turn one. And yes. I want to uh, be able to wrap the bottom. 
Especially with these old tires. I mean, it, it, this restart is bound to be a complete disaster. <laughs> you know, it's going to be interesting to see this one play out. And that's why you see all the drivers swerving, trying to warm up their tires. Overtime is sponsored by Credit One Bank. It's going to be good. I think you guys set the table perfectly. A lot to watch here. Chandler Smith, Sheldon Creed, Jesse Love, Cole Custer, Austin Hill in the mix. Looking for his first career top five at Phoenix. You see here the NASCAR overtime rules. It's a two lap shootout. Once the leader takes the white flag, the next flag ends the race. We will try that unlimited attempts. And here we go. What a great jump from Sheldon Creed. Oh my God, he has to follow him a little bit more. Yeah, he didn't chase him down quite enough. Yeah. Cole Custer getting a big push by Austin Hill. Chandler Smith doing a good job being able to clear there. Three kind wide of behind control. him. Austin Hill, Jesse Love, teammates side by side. Jesse with the power move on the outside. He's in third. Jesse Love with a peek to the outside. Chandler Smith hanging on to it. White flag is in the air. One more lap. Jesse Love had a great run. He almost looked like he was going to be able to get to the leader. Chaos all around him, behind him. Everybody jockeying for position one last time. Sheldon Creed just with a narrow edge over the two of Jesse Love. Chandler Smith, he got the win in Richmond last year. Can he hang on here? Comes out of turn number four. Chandler Smith will win it at Phoenix for his second career win. Good job today, boys. Solid car. Hate that we got it like that, but we'll take what we can get him. Yeah, he did a great job, and honestly, I think he he had the best car all day long, along with the seven. Yeah, I mean, he says he got it that way. Take it any way you can, bud. You're gonna you're gonna get him the other way at some point, so it, it always comes out in the wash. So congratulations. Elation on winning and heartbreak with Justin Allgaier, Regan. Well, that's right, Jamie. Justin Allgaier seemingly had that race in hand. We saw the tire blowout going into turn one. Was there any sign prior to that anywhere on the racetrack? No, I mean, unfortunately, the wears today have been so good. And, you know, this seven team called an absolutely perfect race. I mean, Jim Pullman did an amazing job. And, and to um, to have as fast a brand professional ride culture Camaro as we did all day, I mean, it's definitely as fast as it's been on the internet. We just aren't doing the burnout in victory lane like Goetta Chandler. So hats off to Chandler. They were really fast all day. Just. Going through the dog leg, um, I felt it come apart, you know, like I ran something over and it come apart. And then at that point, you're just a passenger. And I just hate it. We tore up a race car. I hate it that, you know, we didn't we didn't get to go to victory lane. I hate it for all the guys and gals at Junior Motorsports. I mean, everybody at Chevrolet has been working their guts off to to try and be at this point. And, um, you know, the Hendrick in the shop, it just stinks when it finishes like that. Glad you're okay, Justin. Thanks. Thanks, Regan. Justin Allgaier are credited with the 29th place finish. There's the victory burnout for 21 year old Chandler Smith parks it on the start finish line. Chandler led the most laps today 88 he dominated in that first stage was able to come back after all the carnage and hang on to it. He's having a hard time getting the window net down. A lot of stuff for you there guys to unbuckle gets it out. The fans are ready. Second career win for that young man, Chandler Smith. Gonna run up and get that flag. I think he likes what he's seeing. The car looks good. Right rear held up. Oh, he did a great job. Josh Sims is with the happy winner. Chandler Smith, the winner at Phoenix in the Arc Menard Series, a winner in the Truck Series at Phoenix, and now the Xfinity Series. Talk to me about that final restart and the key to getting this win today. Yeah, uh, first off, all glory to God. Without him, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I wouldn't have a beautiful wife at home with these amazing kids that he's blessed us with. They're my everything. They're my whole world. Um, so I can't wait to get back home to you, honey. Kids, I can't wait to see you tonight. But uh, what a day. Uh, Went from dominating to wasn't great to we were dominated again to wasn't great again. Uh, we just lacked a little bit on the seven. I hate that that happened to him. He definitely had that in the back. So I hate it for him, his guys and all. But 
Uh, our car was definitely as fast as Xfinity 10G today, and I'm so proud of everybody back at Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, it's good finally to get this first one off my back with these guys, so let's go uh, keep racking them up. Second career win for Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith returns. Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota gets that first win locked up on the season. And here's your top 10. How about Jesse Love, guys? Finishes <laughs> second in his fourth career race. Great job. What about my amigo Shane? Look at yeah. him. Yeah, sixth place finish. That's a great job. He kept him. digging. Very happy for him. Anthony Alfredo was a top 10 as well. Sammy Smith got all the way back up to P9. Sammy Smith was able to come back. Parker Kligerman with a messed up race car. He finished so seven good. eight. Hey, we have a lot more racing action coming up tomorrow on Fox at 2.30 Eastern with race day, 3.30 Eastern Fox Cup Racing, where my amigo Daniel Suarez, Joey Logano, be in the field watching you guys go to work. It's been fun today, guys. Thank you so it's much, Jamie. Fun. I hope tomorrow is just as fun as it was today. <laughs> I hope so as well. What an exciting day it was for Joey Logano, Daniel Suarez, Regan Smith, Josh Sims, and our entire Fox Sports team. I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for being with us today. Congratulations, Justin Allgaier, NHRA Top Fuel All-Star from Gainesville is coming up next. Good night. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.